Well, as I uh, make uh, right turns, my left drum rubs against the um, backing plate. And that means that the shim that I put in there last year is probably hammered out. So I'll show you how to put in a shim and stop the uh, brake drum from dragging the backing plate. The wheel has to come off, then the uh, drum has to come off. The brakes have to be uh, relaxed in their uh, adjustment. And I usually just relax it maybe 10 clicks. So when I'm through, I can just put it back 10 clicks and I don't have to worry about adjusting the brakes. But when, and you might use, need a wheel puller to pull off the uh, hub. And then you just simply put a shim on around the axle and uh, on that tapered part and put it back together. I'll show you. This is a great job for grandkids. You just loosen the lugs up and lug nuts and give them the wrench and whatever and let them take the wheel off and later you can have them put it back on. There's a lot here a kid can do, boy or girl. So I've got the wheel off. I took the cutter pin out and I loosened the nut. So now I'll try and uh, relax the brake over here. Ten clicks. You screw it in that direction toward inboard a car. You're unscrewing it. It's a, a simple wedge that you screw out. And then uh, I took the nut off, and after I got the brakes relaxed, the hub came off in my hand. So the drum did. So uh, I didn't have to use a wheel puller. If you need a wheel puller, the Model A wheel puller works real good on these. And most of the time you will need a wheel puller because they, they should be on there real tight. So I'm going to put the shim on. Now this is the shim, just a tapered piece of shim stock. Get that at Snyder's or anywhere. They don't cost much. And be careful with it. They're sharp. You may need a lot of band-aids if you uh, do the wrong thing. But uh, this just uh, goes on and it doesn't uh, interfere with the, the keyway there. So you put the key back in right there and put the hub on. It won't last forever, and it, it just kind of keeps the drum out a little bit so that it won't rub against uh, the backing plate. I got the key in there, and I have the uh, shim there, and I like to fold it up and uh, so that it kind of snaps on there and it'll stay in place as you put the drum on. Now after you put the drum on, you're going to have to have one of these little gaskets, um, an axle drum shaft, axle shaft gasket. You ought to keep those in your toolbox anyway, along with shims. And uh, you put a new one on whenever you take the drum off. Okay, the drum slid on pretty easy. You just line up the key and slide it on, and be careful you don't move the shim. The shim can get pushed up inside the axle, so you got to watch for that. And then I'm going to put the uh, little uh, gasket on, the washer. There it goes. Just like that. And then uh, you just button this guy up, torque it down, put the cotter key in, and always be sure to put the cotter key in. This will ruin your whole day if that cotter key is not in and that nut comes off. Your whole wheel will go off and fly down the road and you're in big trouble. Now that cotter pin is a big safety item. You make sure your car has them, has them there and in place and everything's tight. Okay, ten clicks back on the... Uh, Brake adjuster wedge uh, that's clockwise into the toward the toward the drum toward the backing plate. That's how you go. Some people get confused on this, but brake adjust. You screw the cone in to tighten the brake. You unscrew it, and uh, that loosens it. And that's true on all four wheels. Now I put the tire on, and I'm finished. Good luck.